and we are live. All right, uh, we are here in another QA session with Jake LaBelle, uh, talking about uh, ZOS uh, and uh, surrogate chains. Um, Jake, would you uh, like to tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, how you got into uh, mainframe hacking? Hi, I'm uh, Jake. That's yeah. Um, so I guess uh, how I got into it. Just my company does some jobs in it. I was what was looking at some of the reports they wrote, and I went, "That looks pretty cool." Looked at some pictures of of mainframes, and was like. Yeah, that looks like my type of thing, and yeah, just, <laughs> just jumped right into it. It's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, I think it looks cool, and so just went for it. That's awesome. Uh, and I believe this is your first time presenting at DEF CON, correct? Yeah, first time, yeah. First time. <laughs> uh, so uh, we have a tradition here at DEF CON, uh, whenever you do your first talk, uh, we welcome you onto the, the big stage uh, with uh, a drink. Um, uh, this is for... Uh, contributing content back to uh, the community uh, and uh, answer taking the time to answer questions. Uh, so, uh, cheers to you, Jake. Welcome to DEF CON. Cheers. cheers. I may be zealous with filling up my uh, drink, though, so. <laughs> All right. <laughs> cheers. Yeah. Oof. Uh, so, we've already got a, a few questions that have been. Uh, uh, going through the chat, uh, you kind of already mentioned like what got you into hacking mainframes. Uh, so I'm going to go on to the next one. Uh, most high security systems, uh, security plans will have periodic audits of rights to make sure that former super user accounts cannot be taken advantage of. Uh, your talk sort of goes into how these permissions get chained between users and how they're just sort of left alone. Um, uh, is there, do, do you encounter any of these like issues in audits where like you, you're like, you have to remove these accounts or is it pretty much a no go on touching things? So, I guess you'll have like with an audit, you'll have like, for example, okay, well, we don't want to make some users access this special user, which is basically root. But what about that user, which accesses that user? What about that user, which has access to that user? Mm -hmm. That's not really possible to audit you don't really have the ability to um you don't really have the ability when you're well you probably could but they probably should but they don't <laughs> and uh th this uh can you use this uh technique that you had to like at one point you show like this massive graph viz graph of <laughs> nodes uh so yeah. it looks like you were you were able to fully enumerate uh all those uh chains could you extend that into some kind of like security auditing uh yeah, hundred percent. So they someone, um, someone else who worked at uh, the company. He made like a tool which. So this this one is more of like a um, not an expo exploitation tool, but like one that you would use if you didn't have full access. But if you had full access, mm -hmm. what you could do is you're allowed to. Um, you can do what's called unloading the uh, the rack F databases, which is all the security. So you can just take that, and then offline you can. Just, use that to, to create all the tools. But this one's more for, uh, because if you didn't have access, so from what, what, from what, from your user, what can you access? But from offline, you, there, there's the, um, someone else at the company was making a tool, which takes the rack of database, puts it into any SQL database, and then you can query it however you like. Well, that sounds handy. <laughs> uh, someone else is asking, uh, ZOS is tied to IBM. Do you think this could be applied to IBM I? I've never been on an IBM I. I need to be on an IBM I system just to see what it's like, but I've never actually been on it, so I have no clue what the security is on there. Fair enough. Um, so uh, I, I've got to say that I, I, my uh, knowledge of mainframes is um, fairly weak. Um, when you were at the beginning of your talk, you mentioned a couple, uh, you mentioned uh, partition data sets versus normal ones as if they were uh, like significantly different. Could you? explain what the differences are in those yeah so it's there's no there's no such thing as folders and in mm -hmm. zos so i i don't know why but they, they like to have a flat file system so instead of having that you have file you have data sets mm -hmm. and then there's just uh data sets can have multiple members in them so it's kind of like it, it acts like a folder but they're all part of one single file so it's okay I don't know. It's uh, 
it's how they do it. <laughs> so so we, we think of the, the partition data set as kind of like a file inside of a folder and the data set's the folder. Yeah. Yeah. Close enough? Yeah. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. When, uh, when I was going through it, the first thing was like, okay, how do these correlate to like Unix things? And yeah. then it was like, wait a minute, nothing correlates. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> that, that, that's kind of where, where I was going to go with. Um, but you, you did mention the... the um, OMVS subsystem, I believe it was, that is a, uh, yeah. a Unix-like environment. Uh, how how, yeah. how comfortable would someone that is like Linux-centric feel inside this OMVS environment? It's basically exactly the same. The only thing is that once you're in that system, you can run anything on the mainframe as well. So you can just say, you can run a TS, so TSO, which is the, um, like the, the normal mainframe part, and just go TSO, whatever script you were going to run in the mainframe thing. So it's it's exactly the same as any sort of Linux system. Like all the like privileges are the same. Just you can also, if you have it, you also have access to that user's mainframe stuff. Okay, got it. I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so Jake, ahead. do you think uh, your tool could work on ACF two or TSS? Uh, again, never been on that. I've only been on a couple of mainframe jobs, so. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> But if it, if it allows surrogate um, submission, then yeah, th yeah, it works, yeah. So uh, from my kind of understanding of, of what surrogates are is they are delegating, it's like a tree of delegated permissions, right? So uh, you, you get the surrogate permission for another user and then you are effectively gaining all the rights of them, right? You can, so depending on what type of surrogate you give, so the main, the main one is you'll have user.star in class surrogate and that means that you can submit a job as user.star but there's other there's other type of ones you can have but a lot of the times if you have surrogate and one person you can do all the stuff from that like like for example the, there's one that i had where you can so a surrogate which allows you to write to do sue but if you can do sue you can run any tso command so it basically means you have full privileges on there Got on it. that thing. Got it. So is it something that you have to like, it, generally you have to specifically invoke to get the other user's permissions or do they all just like get wrapped up into... So that, that, that's one of the things that why, why, why it required the tool was that you couldn't just... So from, if user one had submit on user two, you couldn't just run like... Uh, you couldn't just run user two stuff. You have to run a, a job as user two and that will get returned sometime later. So that, that, that's why the, the tool is required, is that you can't just run the... You don't have the privileges. You can submit a job as that user, but yeah. Okay. I, I, I actually think that I, I like literally have that in my head now. That, that's, that's awesome. That, that was really well described. Um, I, what are your thoughts on JCL? It's a, it's a great language. Yeah, it's, uh, what am I... Yeah, it's uh, it takes a while getting used to because reading the IBM docs is, uh, it, it's a skill in itself. Like I, I think I've actually started to. It's really I, I, I don't know if it's something I should be worried about, but I've actually started to be able to understand IBM documentation, and that's 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 worrying. Me. Like, <laughs> that does sound a little concerning. This, this, and I'm like, wait, wait, I get it now. But yeah, so it's uh, yeah. So JCL is just just a way to submit batch jobs and. Yeah. Is there, is there any kind of like tooling that makes like interacting with that that uh, kind of like languages easier? Or I, I know that like the, the one of the current hot things is like building languages on top of languages. Um, so yeah, the writing like when I, when I, whenever I wrote my programs or any type of thing that I use because it's just easier. It's the JCL. I don't really understand how. I don't really understand how you pass like parameters to it. Uh -huh. So I just put it all in like one little Rex script and then it will just run itself. And then, so Rex is like, it's just a scripting language. It's just easy to use. So I just, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, there, there was an example. Yeah. Chase the yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. It's, it's just, um, what is it? JCLs. They just, there's lots of like programs that it can run that I have no clue what it does, but, I know, I know, like, it feels like I now know, like, what the, like, the most important ones do, so that's, that's fine. I, I mean, it's probably 
enough. Like if you, if yeah. you know, if, if you know, like 75% of most systems, you, you are very comfortable in that system. Yeah. Uh, so Jake, have you made any other tools that kind of help to assist with mainframe hacking? Yeah. So I've got, a, I've got a couple which are varying in their, in their usefulness. So, um, I've got one, which is, uh, so the, the database where all the security is held is just, it's just a database. So. If you have access, if you have right access to that, you have access to anything. So I created a quick tool, which if you do have right access to it, it will just insert, uh, it will look for your user, find the special flag and just turn it to one. So that's a tool, which it's very unlikely that you'll have access to that. Like that is something that is audited. So that it's like, make sure that no one has access to this file, because if they do, <laughs> they have complete access to everything. Um, or other tools. Oh, I made another, um, so a, a SOX proxy in Rex. So that allows you to, if there's any like, uh, so for example, if there's any like internal, um, ports you want to hit, mm -hmm. or if there's any like, because everyone trusts the, everyone trusts the mainframe. So why wouldn't you accept all the firewall stuff from that? So if there's anything you want to like hit from the mainframe, then there's a SOX proxy, which you can just run in Rex and then just pass on to any, uh, any any port that you can see from there. So, so Rex is like is like a it's not just like like a scripting language like Bash, which just has like consumes a bunch of tools. Like it is like a language. Like it, it it's like fully capable of doing like hosting, yeah, like I, network sockets and stuff like that. Yeah, it can do. So Rex, you can do any anything you want to do. And there's also a I don't really understand what the functionality is, but I know how to use it. So that's like so if you run if you write something called address. So for example, so if you want to write a TSO command, mm -hmm. you write address TSO, and that means that any command you run in, in, in quotes runs as TSO. So the way I describe it is that you can run a program as another program, but I don't even know if that's actually what's happening. I just know that you can be like address uh, DB2, which is an SQL database in, uh, in IBM. And so, and that will then run a command as DB2. So it's, it's a fairly useful language. You can just just be like, this program, I want to run this command. And <laughs> yeah, it will do it. Cool. Uh, Mainframe is asking, uh, could you talk a little bit uh, more about TK4 and the difference between ZOS? So TK4 is, it's a beautiful thing. It's a, it's a open source mainframe from, well, for a public domain, I don't know what the actual term, like oh. specific term is, but it's a, uh, in 1980, they made a mainframe operating system, which is now in the public domain. And so they've made some tools, they made from there, they've created TK4. And TK4 just allows you to just muck around with, uh, I think I put it in my, a link in my, uh, in my uh, presentation. But if you want, just download that, uh, like TK4, you can run it off anything. I ran it off of Raspberry Pi, so it's kind of fun. Nice. But the, uh, yeah, if you want to run like uh, like do like JCLs, you can install um, uh, Rex on there. You can install Kix, but also not actually. This was actually one of the things in my presentation that like I didn't know how to say. Like, so there's something called Kix with a C, and then something called Kix with a K. And I was <laughs> trying to say like, the difference between them, and I was just like. So yeah, on, on my program, this this has kicks, but this has kicks on here, and I was like, wait a minute, how, I've how just said this twice. <laughs> but yeah, so KIC at CS is a open source. If you want to muck around with kicks on a, uh, which is one of the most like used thing on a mainframe, it's kind of like a web server ish type of thing. It's I don't know. There, there's no like equivalent to it, kind of. But yeah, if you uh, yeah, TK4, it's really good. If you want to just muck around with... Uh, Mainframe bits. Yeah, and it, and it's yeah completely open source, so muck around with that and... Do, do, yeah. you have, do you know of any like good resources for like learning how to use and operate a mainframe? It's like, it's like coming into it cold, which is like booting up a, <laughs> yeah. a Raspberry Pi image, seems like... So... <laughs> yeah, the best, the, yeah, yeah. The the best place. Well, the thing is, is that it, I, this is nineteen eighties. My mainframe. So even the IBM docs doesn't tell you what to do, how to do on oh, this. God. So, 
the um, the kind of two places where it's the most. So on there's a uh, a Mattermost uh, community called Mainframe dot community. Super helpful. If you have any like stuff asking questions on there, we'll get we'll actually get questions answers instead of just being like ask ask your uh, ask your uh, SME how to do this. It's like but yeah. So a Mainframe dot community, very good place for people to <laughs> ask just like stuff. But uh, yeah, some other places you might find that your questions don't get answered, but that's good. Um, what other place? Uh, I think so. On my um, on my YouTube, on, on there's this person called Moshix on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Very very helpful on like TK4, like how to install these things, how to yeah, how to how to do a lot of stuff on uh, TK4. Oh, excellent. Now, was there anything uh, for your research or even in your presentation that you? didn't get to or that you wanted to look further into uh, that you maybe will look more into in the future or you think it might be good if other people were to try to build upon what you've done? So, uh, so on, on the surrogate chains, I've, I've basically just done the, there's the star.submit privileges and the uh, ppx.serve.star privileges, but like there's other surrogate classes. I don't really know how they work, but if they could all get, if they, if like, I don't know, how, and also how, if those surrogate classes, other classes, can get you access to everything, then those should also be added to the program. Like if there's, if there's like a, um, yeah, if there's if there's another surrogate that I've missed, then yeah, that that's definitely should be something that should be added. Is your your have you like open source the tool? Is that publicly available at this point? Uh, yeah, on GitHub, I've put my. I think I've, I, yeah, I've put my tool. It's, let me just Have you actually made it live, made it public? <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll, I'll fling it onto the, uh, In, into the track chat. Yeah. Oh, there's lots of chats. I'm very confused about there's, where it is. It, yeah. I'm much- Discord user, yeah. but, uh, Good luck finding it. It is in the DEFCON Talk Tracks group, uh, and you can either put it in track one. I or found track. it. There you there go. You go. Uh, that's uh, that's one of the things that uh, when you're on a client call and uh, you can't work out how the tech works, it's like, uh, sorry, I'm trying to work out how to get Skype working with my uh, with my audio. Please give me ten minutes to work this out, please. <laughs> I am running out of questions. Is there anything uh, in particular that you want to like talk about or advocate for or anything else uh, you want to, uh, any other uh, areas of interest in the InfoSec world, anything like that, anything you want to share? Uh, I guess there's the, uh, the thing about like, I think a lot of people are like, mainframes? Why mainframes? What's the point of them? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, so, so they do batch friends? jobs incredibly, incredibly efficiently. Like people are like, "Oh yeah, just go cloud." It's like, yeah, you don't. When you're trying to deal with like millions of uh, like credit card transactions, it may not be the most uh, cost-effective to do it on on a uh, on like a AWS instance. That might that might be pretty expensive. And you also have the other thing where all the code's already in on the mainframe, so like. It's going to be pretty difficult to convert your COBOL code to, uh, I don't know, whatever, 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 whatever that you're language. trying to convert it to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Any, any, uh, any of the popular languages. Um, uh, Hawkeye is uh, asking about bricking the mainframe. <laughs> uh, I, I guess, are with any of the things that you're, you ever like play around <laughs> with or do, do you? Is that a concern? Is that something that you have to like keep in your mind? The uh, there is the thing where like on on client side, but uh, so on a web app, when you're in a testing environment, you're like, okay, I'll just I'll just keep throwing stuff at it. Let's see what happens. Let's let's see there. Yeah, let's let's just keep throwing random yeah. like payload, like scripts at it. On a mainframe, you're like, hello, like person I'm testing this on. Can I throw this at this before I like? I I don't want to break your like 
your massively expensive system. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, let's just make sure this is, this is okay first. Like yeah, a so... major backbone in your, your organization. Can I just yeah. potentially screw it up right now? But yeah, so it's... Uh... Yeah, there's also the... Um... The uh, the fun, the fun thing is that uh, like maybe on like a, a mainframe you might the testing environment may be completely different to the uh, to the actual like production environment, mm -hmm. which is great fun. Where you're like, oh look, I found something. Is this a thing in your actual like? No. Okay. Cool. Oh, that was a, that's a good like that was a good like uh, six hours looking at that. Great. Thanks. Cool. Um. So it seems as though that uh, what you're doing is coming probably even more into demand. I'm seeing where people are, are looking for people that can program in COBOL and maintain mainframes. Is this something that you think might be an area that would be good for people to get into? And if so, if somebody with experience wanted to make the jump over, what sorts of things could they look into? How could they even get started in being able to su support or test or work with mainframes? So there is so um so I guess like if you're on if you're in like a like like a uh like a, like a company you could just shadow a job that that's probably like there's also the there is a ZOS 1.10 on Pirate Bay which of course I would not be supporting you know piracy is bad and very illegal <laughs> do never do that but if you do have that that might be useful but yeah, yeah. so so who, <laughs> that's who... Who who does use still use uh, mainframes today? Like like what industries or major what companies, if you can say any, uh, still make use of mainframes? So basically, every every bank that's big still uses mainframes. There, again, they're, they're doing like massive batch like jobs, and they already have all the infrastructure already. So they're not yeah. gonna when they're like, okay, who do we need to go? Do we need to like do we want to move everything to the cloud or do we want to continue on a mainframe? The answer, the answer to that question is they're not going to change their entire system to get to, to try and maybe I don't even know if it would save money, but maybe I don't know. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I guess a lot of governments still uh, use mainframes. Like mm -hmm. for example, I think there was a freedom of information request to the UK government about uh, what mainframes are still in use, and one of the things that really got me was so this was to the the uh, People who do like the um, the treasury, I think, mm -hmm. and so they were like, okay, here are the, the the four mainframes that are out of date that we use, and they're like ten years old, and they also say, here are three other mainframes that are managed by Fujitsu that we use. So, through some research, I'm pretty certain that these are like twenty year old mainframes that have like probably never ever been looked at ever. <laughs> they're, just, they're just running like and I looked at them and I was like okay what are the ones that are running it's like oh these do all the customs in the UK huh I bet they never want to ever change that shit ever <laughs> they're literally just like we're never changing this 20 year old mainframe that we have no one's ever looked at it it's not even like it's not even uh, an IBM mainframe it's a special UK mainframe that got bought out by Fujitsu that is now running the customs in the UK and I'm like this has never been looked at. And even <laughs> if looked at it, like even even with if a mainframe specialist looked at it, they wouldn't be able to know anything. It's like it's written in this weird language that I I've never heard of. Maybe other people have heard of SCL. I don't know. Have you guys heard of that? Uh, I, I think I, I think that I, I've come across that in another DefCon talk. Maybe yeah. I get exposed I, to I, a I lot of things. But, <laughs> um, we, we we did have a. Uh, 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 another a talk related to to past talks. Uh, uh, Cahill says uh, I've enjoyed various ZOS talks uh, at DEF CON over the last few years, but I never hear about mainframe security. Uh, otherwise, are they a common attack target, or do they tend to go overlooked because of the foreignness of the platform? What does the defense side look like outside of the kind of audits you mentioned? I don't actually know. Like the access that, so it feels like the only people who would actually be able to access this are people with like who are fairly, uh, like, sophisticated. You wouldn't have, like, just a random 
attacker going after a mainframe because it's it's not only like hidden in their internal network. So like it'd probably be like a nation state attacker. So like or like that type of like level. So I, mean, I feel like if they did attack, they, they wouldn't be going after financial stuff. So you wouldn't really ever see that it was happening. Maybe I don't know. I mean, like I, there was I, the um. The, the like there was the, oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I, I mean. <laughs> Uh, so, like, this might have been in uh, us chatting before the actual stream start, but you did mention that you've, like, uh, you found some mainframes that were just exposed online just by dropping something into uh, Shodan. So, so like, it's maybe not just a deep internal threat. Um... Yeah, the so the majority of the ones I saw on Shodan were, like, uh, there's, actually a, there's actually a fun site of... Um, that uh, mainframe sent me about uh, all the internet. It's it's just a bot that you just that people have sent mainframe IPs to it, and it just goes scrapes the picture of the uh, like the initial screen of it. As <laughs> I think is a fairly uh, fairly, fairly fun uh, fairly fun innocent. Site, but yeah, yeah. It's um, but yeah. So there's, there's it's there's a couple of the government ones, but a lot of them are just. Uh, like emulated ones, but uh, yeah, I think it's. Uh, I think that's like the, the, the thing I was gonna say was that, like, if a if a nation state ever got a hold of something, it's unlikely they would ever like reveal like reveal themselves in that way that like that they had got access to that. Like, it's not like a criminal organization where they'd be trying to like go after mm -hmm. like those type of things. So they, they'd use and it's also the thing it. where. Um, I don't know if there was in the news recently the the owner of Pirate Bay uh, hacked a mainframe. It was it was a while ago, but there's uh, the uh, I must have missed that one. Yeah, it was. Uh... But how secure are they from the inside? It, would it be as uh, simple as just being able to access somebody's workstation from inside to be able to get get to the mainframe? Mainframe saying it's the Logica breach. Yeah, the Logica breach. And the fun thing about that one as well is that they released, well, I don't know if they released on purpose, but all of the, like, the court documents were released. It's on GitHub, by the way. So you can see what the fun tools they used uh, to, like, to access all the, uh, to do all the stuff. Uh, they, main... uh... Yeah, Mainframe says it's on WikiLeaks. Uh, so anyone out there that's looking for more information, uh... <laughs> apparently there's a lot more data out there. Uh, that's... That sounds pretty fascinating. Um, yeah, actually, writing a writing a tool, and I looked at uh, Logica, and I was like, "Wait a minute, they they did this already." Oh, <laughs> I think I got I got beat out by a by a, by the hackers by a oh. dump <laughs> dump of random hacker activity. I love it. So you just had to one up them by presenting at DEF CON. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we Maybe. are we are we're approaching the end of the time of our QA session. Is there anything else you want to talk about while you still have the camera? Uh, no, I think I'm, I think I'm all tapped out. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Well, uh, thank you very much for doing this Q and A session. Thank you for presenting to DefCon once again for your first time. Really hope you come back. Uh, this was great content. Um, I need to. I need to get back to at least go to Vegas at least at least yeah, once. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta experience in person DefCon as well. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much, and uh, we'll talk to you later.